Now the question is where am I gonna put all of these? Oh, sexual. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. I'm Madison and today I think it is time to go ahead and pot up all of the eight plants that I got from eight, I can't believe it, eight. All of the eight plants that I got from the Equigenera pop-up in Denver, Colorado. And um, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and pop these suckers up. So while I pop those up, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about when me and my boyfriend decided to start living in a van and just like what that process was like and like why we started it and um, all that kind of stuff because I don't know, I think it's interesting and I have some, uh, I have some insight now looking back on it um, now that it's been a few years since we have lived in the van, we do still have the van. Um, and I'm gonna try and find like some pictures and stuff like that to pop up for while I'm telling you things. I was not great about, not great about documenting the whole process. So yeah, I will show you whatever I've got. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about living in a van and why we decided to live in a van, um, not down by the river to be specific, but um, just along whatever road was there. So yeah, let me go ahead and back up a little bit so that you can kind of see what I'm doing as I'm repotting these plants. And yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it here. Let me just kind of show you what I have in my bowl here of stuff. I haven't like fully mixed it up yet or anything, so I wanted it to kind of look cute, but that's ruined now, so that's fine. So all I have in here are some Lekka balls, these Lekka pebble guys. I've got some perlite mixed in there and potting mix. Now, this is never my preferred potting mix. This is miracle Grow. Um, no shade to miracle Grow. It's just not my preferred potting mix. I prefer to use um, a local mix when possible. That's why I usually use that like tuber mix because I'm pretty sure that is local, fairly local to me at least in Colorado. Um, but yeah, I ideally would have orchid bark mixed in here. Um, that's what I really want to have mixed in here but um, that just was not available at the store that I went to and I would have to drive like pretty much across town to be able to get it and I just like was not, I'm not in the place to do that quite yet. So um, this is what I've got. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix her up here. I went ahead and cleaned out a bunch of pots. I actually cleaned these out. Like, like do you see that? Do you see in there? That's pretty clean. That's a, that's a pretty clean pot right there. <laughs> so um, yeah, I cleaned out a bunch of pots. I'm hoping that they will all be um, of an okay size for the plants that we're doing. Um, so yeah, let's just, let's just see, see how, we're, how we go here. Let's do, let's do this guy first, why not? So this is gonna be our first plant that we pot up, this beautiful, absolutely stunning philodendron plowmanii. She's got those ruffly petioles, if you can see that there. And she's just gorgeous. I can knock it over it. Very minimal, minimal silver um, splooshing is what I'm gonna call it on this particular plant so far, but you know, I'm not really sure how these plants work as far as the silveriness goes, if that's something that I can like, you know, boost up with more nutrients or something like that. I am gonna be um, starting to use CalMag more when I water my plants because it's just something that my boyfriend uses all the time on his plants and um, it works out really well down there. So um, why not use it for my house plants? You know what I mean? So let's see, hmm. Okay, so it looks like the pastazanum has the most roots. So we'll do that one next. And I think I'm gonna use this pot for that. So I'm gonna save that one, I know for sure. I'm gonna put some of our mixture in here. So our story begins, I am not, I do not remember what year this was, but this was at least, at least six years ago now. I wanna say probably six or seven years ago now. And um, my boyfriend and I were living in Everett, Washington, which is a really cute town, not like the nicest area. Um, we were pretty close to Highway, what was that? Highway 99, is that, is that what that is? Yeah, 99, I wanna say that's what that is. And, um, yeah, it's not the best area. You could you could just like, you know, walk down. We'd be walking our dog, Opal. She was our first our first girl. Oh my gosh, I could do a whole separate thing about Opal and just 
her and how we found her and all that stuff and what she went through before we got to have her. But um, but anyway, we would just be like walking, you know, walking our girl down the street, just like a block down from our house. And, you know, there would be, <laughs> there would be needles and stuff like that all over the ground. I laugh because it makes me uncomfortable. So just so you know, that's what that is. I don't think it's funny that people were, you know, using drugs and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, having to do that on the streets is just really sad and scary. But that was just the area that we lived in. Mind you, we were 15 minutes away from like a really bougie area, which is kind of like where my family lives um, and still lives. And uh, not like terribly bougie, but you know, just like, it's a lot nicer, you know what I mean? You're not gonna be seeing that kind of stuff all over the ground. Um, but, you know, that's just kind of where we were. It's what we could afford. And we were still paying so, so much. So we lived in a one bedroom, like 500, maybe 550 square foot apartment with our dog and our cat. So we had our girl, Opal, that was our dog and our cat um, was our sweet boy named Bubba. All four of us lived in a 550, we'll, we'll say high end, we'll be generous, 550 square foot apartment. And we paid, it was a lot. It was close to what we pay now for 1600 square feet um, and like a garage and stuff. We were paying, I wanna say close to 1500 um, a month. And that was before any of our utilities. So we were paying a lot, um, a lot. Both Pace and I were bud tenders at that time and um, we both loved our jobs, absolutely loved our jobs. If we still lived there, we would both probably still be working for the same company. I for sure would probably, I yeah, I would definitely be still working for the same place. Um, I love that job. I could never speak highly enough of it. We were paying a lot to live in a not great area. Bam, first plant is done, philodendron plamanii. Looking gorgeous. So yeah, that's kind of paints the setting for you. That's where we were living, Everett's, Everett, Washington. Um, it's about 45 minutes outside of Seattle, north of Seattle. And, um, but we live very close to my family. So I did absolutely love that. Yeah, living in a not great area, paying a lot for rent. So we're gonna do this SP Columbia next. Oh my God, she's so beautiful. We do have a like fully yellow leaf here. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off. It was time. Ooh, that came off with relative ease too. So, you know, that's, that was definitely time. And pull just some of the, there's like some old nasty sheath on here. I'm just gonna pull that off. So that's where we were. That's how we were feeling. We felt like we were paying way too much for way too little, um, you know, our apartment was nice enough and all that, you know what I mean? Like the amenities were decent and you know, the apartment like looked nice on the inside and all that, but it just, it, you know, it wasn't what we wanted. We wanted something better. We wanted something different. So we had been, we're always like big YouTube watchers, um, especially my boyfriend, super, super into watching YouTube and stuff like that. And he's just, he's a big learner. Um, so always just watching things and learning things. And for a while he was really getting into watching videos about like people vid the people little, building out their vans and um, you know what that was like and that whole process and then just like looking into van life more and more and like what that meant what that looked like and just talking about it and kind of like daydreaming a lot <laughs> for a really long time like months and months and months we were talking about this and so we just decided to start saving and for us we were kind of at that point where like we needed to not see the money in our bank account because otherwise we would feel like, oh, we have such a good amount of money, let's like go do something fun. Whereas like we wanted to feel like we didn't have any money in the bank and we wanted to feel like tight, you know what I mean? Because we just needed to get in that mode of saving and that was what worked best for us was just acting like we have no money in the bank. We do not have the extra money to go be out and buying fancy, food or going out and getting drinks or something like that. We need to just be like doing that stuff at home, spending our time with our dog and our cat and us and building up ourselves financially so that we can make a difference for ourselves and for our future. And that's just what kind of worked to kick it into gear for us. Oh my gosh, I'm so thirsty. 
So we started a little savings just in cash. Um, this is not necessarily what I recommend for everyone to do because you're not like gaining any interest or anything like that. Um, but it's just what worked for us. It's also like not the safest because what if someone broke in and like found our like little stash of cash that we've been saving for months and months and months, that would have been devastating. So definitely not like the safest option, but you know, you do what works for you and what, you know, what you gotta do. So that's just what worked for us. Look at the beautiful SP Columbia. Ah, that's so gorgeous, you guys. Wow. I'm gonna put a little bit more soil on top because it feels wiggly and it just needs water too. So it'll all settle once it gets water. I just don't have that handy right now, but that'll, I'll do that right after we get done talking. Why are you barking up there, dude? Beautiful. Oh my God, so stunning. Wow, we cannot believe that's in my house. So yeah, we just started saving. We saved for, honestly, I don't remember how long. We saved for quite a while um, until we had a nice little like nest egg built up where we felt, did I just put dirt on my face? Where we felt comfortable enough to start looking at things, start looking for a van and start looking into building it out and how much that's gonna cost and what we're gonna need to do that and just start kind of pricing things out a little bit. And, um, we started doing it. We started really looking into it, really seriously um, budgeting even more. And um, it was just, it got more and more exciting. It was such a fun time to just like, you know, go from that daydreaming process to like, are we really going to do this? We're, we're doing this. Okay. And yeah, it was, it was such a fun time. So after we got our little like nest egg that we felt, you know, comfortable enough, not a ton, mind you at all. Um, but we, you know, we got a, a few grand or whatever saved up in cash. And, um, once again, not what I recommend necessarily to just like save your stuff in cash, but whatever. Um, and yeah, so once we did that, we started really looking for a van. And I feel like, I don't know, in my head, I found it pretty quickly, but I'm sure once I talk to Payson, he'll be like, no, it took us a while. But I don't know, I feel like it didn't take us that long to find it. Ooh, we're doing the pastas on them now. And um, I just peeled off this sheath that had been in the water and it revealed a nice little growth point. <laughs> That's so exciting. I oh, and beautiful roots on here too. Ugh, Equigenera, I just love ya. So yeah, we um, we started looking for a van and I found one. Um, once again, I feel like it was pretty quick, but I don't know, I'll put like a note on the screen if it really took forever um, after I talked to my boyfriend. But, um, but yeah, I found a van and it was actually an old church van. Um, they, you could like see where they once had like a sticker or something on there for their church, but they didn't have that on there anymore. Like when we bought it, but there was like, you know, you could tell it was on there once before. Oh no, I'm going to have to set this aside and put some more soil in. Um, and before I tell you about like finding the van, just to backtrack a little bit, I don't want to like, you know, be talking too much smack on Everett because we did absolutely loved where we lived, despite it being, you know, not the best area with all of like the drugs and stuff that comes with living in an area that is just a little bit less fortunate. Is that even how you say that? I don't know. Oh, that was a lot of perlite. Holy shit. A lot of perlite. Okay, we'll see if I can mix that in there. Um, but despite all that, we did really love the area that we lived in because like we would go to the beach all the time. There was this park that we would um, walk through. It was a beautiful, beautiful park, um, like our trail, I guess. Med I want to say it was like Meadowdale Trail or something. My boyfriend will probably remember. He's got fucking brain of steel. So I will ask him so that if you guys are ever in that area, you can go and check it out because it's absolutely stunning. And it's just this like long, beautiful trail through the woods that leads you to the ocean. And it's amazing. So um, I, I definitely do miss that. That's like the thing I miss the most is living by the water. Um, I've lived by water my entire life until doing the whole van life thing and like driving away and living in, you know, 
little different places for little bits of time and then living here in Colorado where I am very landlocked. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that it's a beautiful, beautiful area despite its, you know, downfalls. <laughs> um, okay, back to the pasta and back to the van. So I found this church van. Um, it was, is a 2000 Dodge Ram 3500 van. Um, I'll pop a picture up so you know what I'm talking about. I'll see if I can find a picture from before we like did stuff to it. I know I've got pictures. And it was like this kind of teal, bluey, greeny color, um, like 17 or 16, I don't remember the what they call it, but it is a passenger van. Um, and it had all of the seats in it because like I said, it was a church van. So it's what the church used to, I don't know, transport their people, places, I don't know. I don't, I don't go to church, so I'm not sure how that worked, but they used the van for transportation and then they didn't need it any longer, obviously. So they were selling it. Um, we got a pretty good deal on it. I feel like I want to say we didn't pay more than like two grand for it. I want to say it was like 1500 or something like that. Once again, I don't totally remember. I'll pop up, pop up the price. Um, cause I'm sure that my boyfriend remembers once again, that brain of steel is always working for me. But, um, but yeah, we had to like go to the church and everything to buy it from them. We like went into his office to sign all the paperwork and everything. So it was, um, it was a really interesting experience for I think both of us. I don't think we'd ever had um, an experience quite like that buying a vehicle, um, but it was really nice. They were super, super friendly and um, you know, they were excited to hear like what we were doing with it and stuff. Now that I remember, it did take us a while to find a van because we did some, we did a lot of looking at different ones. I actually remember now there was an orange van. Um, it was similar to the van that we bought. I want to say it was also a Dodge, but um, our van had, that we purchased had like double opening, like barn door back doors. Um, and the, uh, the orange one that we were considering had like one large one, which is super cool, super like vintage looking, but it's also a little bit more, I don't know, like you can't really discreetly open that. You know what I mean? Whereas like you can open the double back doors and have like a little bit of privacy. Whereas you can't really do that with like the giant swinging back door. Um, but that one was a little bit like had some more issues. I think right off the bat, not that the van that we bought didn't have issues we will get there. But, um, but the guy just was like not willing to go down in price. But I want to say we drove like all the way close to the airport, which was like, you know, sorry, I just got a notification. Um, the airport, you know, like down, you know, past Seattle, I want to say it's like deep in Seattle. And, um, so that was quite a drive for us. And we went there, I want to say a couple times to check that van out. And that one just didn't pan out for us, which in you know hindsight, I'm glad it didn't because I love the van that we got. But um, let me start potting up this next plant here and stop just chatting your ear off a ton. Ooh, we're on to the next, the next holder of plants. That means I can use some of this water to water a couple of these guys. I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm sorry if I'm kind of like jumping back and forth too with telling you this story. It's been so long. Um, but yeah, I'm just, we're just chatting here. You know what I mean? So I feel like if I go back and forth a little bit, that's okay. We got the van, super cute van. It's the turtle, Myrtle the turtle is her name. <laughs> and um, yeah, like I said, she had all of the seats in her still. So we, I wanna say we tried to get the seats out ourselves um, and it just was not working. They were, the bolts were all like old and rusted and like really, really in there. So it just wasn't happening um, by ourselves at least. But yeah, so we had to get the seats taken out. Um, so we got that taken care of. I feel like that was like pretty expensive. I don't remember. You know, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm gonna be saying I don't remember for a lot of stuff, so I apologize like with little details like that. We got the seats taken out and then after that, we started like, or actually right as soon as we got the van, we started drawing out different ideas for how we were going to want to have the whole layout of the van set up and it went through a couple different iterations and we drew out a bunch of different things when i say we i mean my boyfriend he's much more artistically um, inclined than i am so even with like drawing stuff like that he was much better than me so it was really nice that he could do that so i could kind of like visualize it a little bit more because i I can't just really like visualize something like that. I need to kind of like play with it a little bit or see it, you know, drawn out um, essentially. So we kind of got it all figured out. I want to say we had like 
30, or excuse me, 63 or 67. I wanna say it was 63. That was 63 square feet um, in total of like living space in our van. And, um, and once again, we were doing this with me and my boyfriend and our 60 pound pit bull and our cat. Um, so we got it all mapped out and we started just going to work, um, putting a floor in. We put these beautiful like hardwood floors in. I don't know if, I don't think they were true hardwood, they, but they looked like hardwood floors and they like, you know, went in as hardwood floors do. I think the hardest part, one of the hardest parts was probably like figuring out the siding and the, um, what's it called? The, the roof. <laughs> the ceiling of it, I guess. Um, that was really hard to figure out. And even still, like, it's not perfect the way it is right now. Um, we haven't, you know, really needed, we haven't used the van in forever, actually. It's kind of a crime. It was a challenge and really fun to figure out, like, how to get everything set up, how we wanted to have, you know, the front cab separated a little bit from the back so that we have privacy at night. So, you know, my my big thing while Payson was like getting all of the large pieces built together is doing the upholstery for all of our things. So like we had, you know, Payson built like a bed or platform for our bed to go on and we were able to fit a full queen size bed in there. Super, super comfortable, like not an RV mattress, like a full really nice mattress. I think that is still our favorite, both of our favorite mattress that we've ever had was that one. Um, I don't remember where, we ordered it off Amazon or something, I'm sure. But, um, but yeah, we fit a full queen size mattress in our van. It was very comfortable. And we had a fan in there. We had a, um, a nice refrigerator that, um, I don't think it, I don't, I feel like it supposedly like could freeze stuff, but like, let's be real, not really. Unless it was like in the winter time when it was already really, really, really freezing outside, then you could have, you know, safely have frozen stuff in there. But you know, we would have all of the makings for sandwiches and you know, whatever, whatever we wanted to have in there, we could fit, you know, um, I want to say you could fit like a carton of like milk of like almond milk or whatever in there. I mean, obviously whatever milk, but for us it would be almond milk. And um, yeah, it was, it was just so fun figuring everything out. But yeah, anyway, so I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. I told you. So, oh, I feel like I'm getting dirt everywhere. This is our philodendron sodoroi af, by the way, that I just potted up. This was our roughest looking one. So I have high hopes that she will she will bounce back and do well. So while my boyfriend was like building out the platform for our bed to sit on and all of that, we needed compartments for our clothes and everything to be stored in. You know, we can't just be having our clothes all out willy nilly. And so, um, yeah, so we had these two compartments that we built, um, these like long rectangular boxes essentially with no tops. Um, and I wanted, we wanted the front part to like look nice and want it to look nice when you pull it out um so we just i upholstered the outside with this like really nice looking like kind of burlapy but like nicer um kind of material we um made these like covers for the windows so that um you know at night and during the day or whatever we would be able to have plenty of privacy so they were made out of um that like silver silvery like insulation um type of stuff, you know what I mean? But it's really pliable. So I cut that down to the size of all of our windows. And um, we just had, I wanna say we used like that sticky Velcro, you know what I mean? Just like had that adhesive on either side of the um, stuff. So on one side of it, it was just that silvery um, reflective material so that we could put that up against the window so that it would reflect the sun so it wouldn't get so hot during the summers and stuff like that. Um, and then also be able to insulate it during the winters when it was really, really cold and be able to keep some of the heat in there. We put a, a like a cute fabric. I wanna say it was actually just black. I don't think it was that cute. But we put a fabric um, on the other side so that again, it would just look like there was nothing in the van and you just couldn't see in at all. We wanted to be traveling really, really um, discreetly because we didn't know exactly where we were gonna be going. We just wanted to be able to go wherever. Um, we did know that um, I can't remember if we bought tickets before or after we decided to buy the van, but we had tickets to the Cali Roots Festival. It's like a reggae music festival in California. Um, we had tickets for that already. So um, we knew that we were going to be going down there. So we brought our van, we brought our dogs, and that's kind of like where our 
our adventure kind of really began was after that festival or at that festival. Before we go on to that, um, we're still like building out our van. We had to get all of the compartments figured out. We had to figure out where we wanted to have the litter box and all of that, because obviously we're traveling with a cat and um, he was not an outdoor cat. He was just an indoor cat. And um, although we did have, um, we got him like a harness and stuff like that so that we could try to get him out of the van. And that actually worked quite a few times. He really enjoyed that. After a while, he did not enjoy it at first. He did not enjoy it at first. But after a while, he started to get used to it a little bit more and started to enjoy it a little bit more. Um, oh, I'm potting up this politiflorum, just so you know. Absolutely stunning. It's an awkward plant to pot. I'm just, I've never potted a plant like this before, so I don't really know. I feel like it just kind of wants to hang over, so I'm just gonna let it do that. But yeah, so we built it out. We, um, if you're wondering where we put the, the cat's litter box, Bubba's litter box, we put it um, in between. So under our bed, we had um, two long compartments and that's where we had our clothes, like his and hers clothes. And then in the center, we had it open so that we could have like longer things stored under there if we ever needed like skis or something. We never had that, um, but it was also so that we could have some nice air ventilation. And then in the center under the bed is like where we had the litter box and we had like little wood strips so that the litter box just sat perfectly in there and it couldn't slide anywhere. Um, and then we had like another little section like on either side where like it would hopefully catch the litter from the paws, you know what I mean? Um, Cause the litter will always get everywhere no matter what. Um, but it was just like a constant, cleaning out the litter box like multiple times every day and just you know putting it in a little dog bag and then finding a trash can um so not a big deal but that is where it went um we did not have a toilet in there so you know we went places we got a gym membership we switched gyms actually so we got anytime fitness gym memberships is that when we got them yeah we got anytime uh, anytime fitness gym memberships so that we could go anywhere um anytime because they have those like freaking everywhere and they're pretty much always have showers and stuff and they're usually actually pretty nice so we would just do that um or you know go wherever if we just needed to you know go to whatever store or something if we needed to use the restroom this looks so cool in the pot but yeah those are some of the more nitty-gritty details for you um but yeah and then we just started driving we put in our two weeks at work and we left um it was really really exciting i wanted to mention too before we even left we were living in the van for at least a couple weeks i want to say so you know we spent a lot of time at um this like beautiful park i want to say it's marymore park Again, I feel like that's wrong. It's been so long, you guys. I grew up there, but it's been so long. It was a beautiful, beautiful park, and they had this ginormous um, off-leash dog park there as well, and we would take Opal there all the time, and she just loved it. She would meet so many different dog friends and stuff, and it was so cool to just like watch her enjoy herself there. So we got to kind of like try out living in the van before we just left everything that we knew. So yeah, we lived in the van for a couple weeks, I want to say, before we left for our journey down to California for our festival, for the Cali Roots Festival. We both had, like I said, we had amazing jobs um, that we loved. So we were both able to you know, utilize our <laughs> workplaces for a place to park our van. Um, you know, obviously during the day while we were at work um, and then also at night. So our companies were nice enough to let us park our van overnight so that we had a safe space with cameras on us um, so that we were comfortable sleeping at night in our van, um, which was really, really nice. Like I said, especially for that first little bit moving into the van. Um, it can be really scary, you know, and it feels uncomfortable. It feels like everyone can hear you. Um, they usually can't, but, um, you know, it just, it feels that way. So it was really, really nice because then like, you know, if it was my day off or something, or I got off work before my boyfriend did, I would be able to go to his work where, you know, he would have the van or vice versa and just be able to hang out there with my dog Opal and my cat Bubba and, it was awesome. And then he would just be able to like come up to the van like when he was on his lunch breaks or um, just work breaks or whatever and be able to come 
hang out with us for a little bit. And it was just lovely. It was really, really nice. But I will say like, as a female, um, I think especially, I think, I mean, and as anyone, but I think as a female especially, um, you know, being in the van at night, um, or really anytime, but especially at night by yourself can be kind of daunting and a little bit, just a little bit scary. Let's just be honest. It can be a little bit scary. The different sounds that you hear, you're like, okay, who is that out there? Are you just lurking? What are you doing? Do you know that I'm in here? If you know that I'm in here, do you also know that I have a large, a large dog who looks really scary in here? She's not scary, but she looks it and she can sound scary. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know, just going through all those different thoughts and, um, you know, the, the what ifs and stuff like that. Um, luckily I wasn't as, ooh, I wasn't as into true crime, um, as I kind of am now. So I am thankful for that because, ooh, I would not have been sleeping well at all. Specific places in general were like extra kind of creepy, I will say, and like a little bit sketchy feeling, you know, if we were pulled off at like a truck stop or something like that, like on our travels and to just sleep for the night, um, you know, it can be a little bit, a little bit creepy. I thought I would throw that in there because I just want to be fully transparent. It's not always just like super fun, you know, rainbows and sunshine and daisies and whatever. It can be, you know, it can be a little bit scary because you are just there by yourself. And honestly, I mean, even when my boyfriend was there with me, even, you know, sometimes we would both get a little bit sketched out. Um, but it definitely, if you're traveling with a partner, it makes things so much better. But let's be honest, you're not always both going to be in there at the same time, you know, like, I mean, maybe you are, but that, that just didn't always happen. So yeah, um, it's just something to think about if you are thinking about like getting into live in that van life, you know? Um, it is really fun because you can just do do whatever, go, what, go where, I mean, you can't just, I mean, obviously you have to have money as a thing. Um, but like, like I said, we had saved up a bit, so neither of us were working for um, a while there, and it was really nice. It was really, really nice, actually. It was so fun. Ooh, I watered this guy so that he would be more stable in there, and I, now I have quite the puddle, but luckily, I'm on my potting mat. Oh, I didn't even mention, too. This is the um, Anthurium Warcreanum Esmeralda. <gasps> She's gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. We are almost done, you guys. I just have... I only have two more plants. So, we're getting there. Oofta. Okay. After our couple weeks, after we put in our two weeks at work and we were officially done, um, we said goodbye to my family, which I could cry about just like right now, just thinking about it. Cause it was, you know, it's hard leaving your family. I've, this is, I've never lived so far away and for so long. Um, from my family. So, you know, it was a big scary leap of a change for me personally. Um, for Payson, it wasn't obviously as big of a deal because he is not, well, it's not obviously for you, but um, he's not from Washington State. He is from Colorado um, and he hasn't, hadn't lived back home in over like 10 years. So, you know, saying bye to family was not as big of a deal for him, but it was really, really hard for me. But I mean, I knew, I knew that we wanted to do this. It was not like I didn't want to go, but you know, it's super emotional saying goodbye to your family when you're like going on this big new scary adventure. <laughs> so yeah, we said goodbye to my family and we started off on our trek. We started driving, we went through Oregon and down to California. We went to our festival, the Cali Roots Festival. Um, I'm sure if any of you have ever been, you know it is super fun, um, very hectic. That was another kind of like, <laughs> whoa, we're doing this, we're doing this. We have all of our belongings. This is all of our, our life is here with us um, and, our, and our, our family, our loved ones, our dog and our cat um, are in there with us and, um, you know, to leave them for, you know, however many hours, handful of hours to go to the festival was honestly <laughs> terrifying for both of us because you know we just we're both like overprotective in that way where we're just like okay nothing can happen no one no one can even look at like don't don't look at our dog okay don't look at our cat don't don't get any ideas these are our children no 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 <laughs> so we would go back like 
every couple of hours, at least, you know, one of us, if not both of us, to go check on them. And then, honestly, it would be a nice kind of break, too. Um, for me personally, going to those, like, kind of super high energy, very crowded festivals and events like that takes so much energy out of me. I'm a major, major introvert. Um, I wouldn't even say I'm an extroverted introvert. I am just an introvert. Um, like when I find my people, I have my people. And that's, that's pretty much how that goes, you know what I mean? So I had like, you know, the people that I was there with that we met at the, um, at the festival, you know, we loved those people. We had so much fun with them, but I still needed like some space away. So that part actually made having the van um, really, really nice because, you know, I had kind of an excuse to like go like, okay, I need to, I need to go check on my dog and my cat and make sure that they're okay. Make sure that they're not too hot um, because it was in the summer Cali Roots happens in the summer, so it was hot in California. So, like I said, we did have the van and stuff like that. We didn't have anything terribly fancy, though, because we were doing things pretty pretty on the cheap. And um, so, yeah, it was really important for us to be going back and checking on the animals to make sure that they were safe and comfortable um, and not too hot, be able to let, um, let Opal out to go potty, um, let Bubba out to just, like get out and explore and kind of get his bearings to see where the heck we were um, and be able to get some time away for ourselves. But that was so much fun. Um, like I said, if you have ever been to Cali Roots, you know it is such a blast and there's so many good, so many good shows. I guess I should elaborate a little bit more kind of too on what that is. It is a three day, three whole days of a reggae music festival um, where it's just like, it's a huge party. It's so much fun. There's tons of good food. There's all kinds of yummy stuff. Um, and it was, it was awesome. We were with, you know, our good friends and people that, you know, we didn't always get to see. Some people that we saw really frequently as well, but you know, people that we didn't always get to see too. And it was kind of just like a last like hurrah almost too. Like it was so much fun and just a really good way to be able to like say bye for now. And I want to say, I can't believe I can't remember, but I mean, I can believe I can't remember. Let's be honest. I want to say though that we went to all three days of that festival, um, which is a lot. Um, and if we didn't go to all three days, you really know that it's a lot. Cause to me, it, it, even so many years later, it feels like it was three days. <laughs> Um, but it was awesome. We just got to see like, you know, pretty much all of our favorite like reggae music artists. And at that time, um, we were both super, super into reggae music. And that was like our main, our main stuff that we listened to. Whereas now we still both love reggae music and all that stuff. But, um, you know, we're, we've kind of broadened our horizons a little bit more since then. Um, but that was, you know, both, both of our like favorite music and like the music that we kind of like found together. And I mean, he was listening to reggae music before I was, but, um, you know, some of the artists and the songs and stuff that came out, came out like when we first, like as we were starting to date and like get serious. So a lot of the music was just like really special for us personally, you know, and it was just lovely. I remember Michael Franti um, was one of the, I feel like he was one of the last shows that we saw. In my head, that was like the peak moment. Um, so it was like the last thing that I really remember. I don't know. <laughs> but um, that was just such an amazing, amazing experience to, um, to have. And right before we started our like super fun traveling um in our van so yeah it was it was awesome it was so awesome I feel like so I'm, I'm potting up my queen right now I didn't even show you oh my gosh I've just potted up this beautiful anthurium vgi when I'm dripping water and now I'm trying to pot up this anthurium queen but she seems like she really wants to stand and I don't really have anything to help her stand right at this very moment. So I think I'm gonna have her kind of, we're gonna let her kind of hang. And I think that's okay. I think that's okay. She's gonna kind of hang like that. But that still looks pretty right, I feel like, you know? I don't know. 
this is my, oh, my first Queen Anthurium. All of these plants that I'm showing you today, these are all firsts for me. And again, I got all of these at the Equigenera pop-up in Denver. These guys have been water for five days. Y'all, I really had to think about that. I think that's where I will just leave it for this little story time, I guess, for today of starting out van life. If you guys liked hearing about that at all, um, let me know. I'd be more than happy to share more with you guys because we went on a lot of different adventures in that van before we landed here in Colorado. And even once we got here, we left for a little over a month um, to go down to Austin, Texas. So I'd be more than happy to share with you guys like that whole process and what that was like um, in another video. Just let me know. Um, because yeah, I love chatting with you guys about this kind of stuff. It just like is so fun thinking back on just kind of like where we started and like all these different adventures that we've had and just kind of like re-remembering. It's lovely, it's lovely. It's making me nostalgic and it's honestly making me a little bit homesick even though we did all of this to leave rainy, rainy Washington. <laughs> all right, there is that queen all potted up. I hope she ends up liking her home. <gasps> Honestly, you guys, I'm freaking terrified of all of these plants. I'm so terrified. Pray for me. And you guys, before I fully wrap this up, I am super happy to say I spilled uh, not none, not no soil, but like the teeniest, teeniest little amount of soil is what I spilled. So I'm very, very pleased with myself. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me and listening to me ramble on and kind of go all over the place with my um, story time, I guess. I don't know, that feels weird to say because it's not like a story, like it actually happened, but... Um, Sure, it's a story time. But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you like this kind of stuff, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every single week. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.